So we've looked at diffusion, now we're going to look at osmosis, another form of passive transport uh, that happens in our body. So osmosis is the net movement again, so that's a big term, right? The net movement of water, right? That's our biggest piece here is that it's the net movement of water, right? We can say through a selectively permeable membrane from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration. Right? Those are our big pieces there, the net movement of water, through a selectively permeable membrane from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration. So, let me say, right, so how is this different from diffusion, right? Water. The first piece is water. Osmosis is only about the movement of water. Okay. Diffusion is the movement of all other substances, right? Solutes. Uh, but here, osmosis is only about water. Second piece that's different from diffusion was the selectively permeable membrane. Right. In our examples in diffusion, it didn't require a cell. Sometimes diffusion can happen through cell membranes, but um, diffusion does not require a cell membrane in order for it to uh, occur. Osmosis does require the selectively permeable membrane. Right. So the net movement of water through a selectively permeable membrane from an area of high water come on, concentration to an area of low water concentration. So when you put the brackets around it, it's just saying concentration, but uh, from an area of high water concentration to an area of a low water concentration. Right? That is our definition of osmosis. In order to understand um, water concentrations, Right? We need to understand the concept of solutions. All right, my pen not working. Right, so what is a solution? A solution is made up of two parts. A solute and a solvent. Now, the definitions of a solute and a solvent are kind of circular definitions, but in a solution, right, you have something that gets dissolved. And then you have something that does the dissolving. Okay. So something that gets dissolved and something that does the dissolving. Those are sort of the definitions of a solute and a solvent. So in an example of salt water, right, an example of salt water, which one is the solute and which one is the solvent? Well, the salt is the solute, the water is the solvent. Right? The salt gets dissolved by the water, it gets dissolved within the water. All right, that is sort of our definition of a solution, right? It has two parts, the solute and the solvent. Water is basically considered the universal solvent. Given enough time, water can dissolve just about anything. There are things that are water insoluble that won't dissolve in water, but for the most part, water, given enough time, can probably dissolve just about anything, right? So that is our definitions of solutions. And so let's look at erase that. Um, we can look at, oh, come on, here we go. That's the one I want. So when we talk about solutions, right, we said there are two parts, a solute and a solvent. Here I used a sugar solution. So if I were to say a 20% sugar solution, right, the solute is our sugar, water is our solvent. And we can say that within a 20% sugar solution, if you were to count up all of the molecules, 20% of the molecules would be sugar molecules, 80% would be water molecules. All right, so that's how you can figure out the concentration of a solution, it's essentially just count up the number of molecules. All right, so here at 20%, uh, in a 20% sugar solution, 20% are gonna be the solute, right, and 80% is going to be the solvent. So let's take a look at this. All right, in our little U-shaped tube here, um, we can call the big pink molecules, let's call those sugar, right? So the pink is sugar. 
stay consistent with our last slide. All right, and then the blue is water. Right. So on what we have here is this little U-shaped tube, and there's a semi-permeable membrane. Right, one of our definitions of osmosis was that uh, it required a semi-permeable membrane. So uh, here we have a semi-permeable membrane that is going to allow water molecules to pass through it, but not the sugar molecules, not our big pink molecules. So on the left side of our tube, you can see that there is sort of a smaller number of sugar molecules on the left than there are on the right. Uh, so let's just, for example, call this a 10% sugar solution. And over here, let's call this an 80%. Ten percent sugar, eighty percent sugar. Okay. Well, we know that osmosis is the net movement of water from areas of high water concentration to low water concentration. So, if we know that this is a ten percent sugar solution, how much water is there going to be? This solution is made up of ninety percent water. Over here, if this is an eighty percent sugar solution, it's going to be a twenty percent water. Osmosis is the net movement of water through a selectively permeable membrane from the area of high water concentration to low water concentration. Here, since it's a 90% water concentration versus a 20%, right, this is a higher concentration of water, and you can see that water is going to move from its area of high concentrations to low concentration. Essentially, what it's trying to do is make that isotonic or make an equilibrium, uh, make an even solution, an equal solution on both sides of the membrane. Um, what this third one is showing is actually an example of what's known as reverse osmosis. And so, wow, that was kind of neat. Oh, my pen is a little wonky today. Uh, this one's reverse osmosis. So what we've done, if we take our um, equal solutions on both sides of the membrane here, and we apply a force to the right-hand side of the tube, well, it's going to want to push all of the molecules back to the left side of the tube. But again, we have this semi-permeable membrane here that's not going to allow the big molecules to fit through. So the small molecules will be pushed over to the left-hand side. It balances out our tube here, but this is one of the ways that you can actually uh, filter water, clean water, is through reverse osmosis. You create a filter that only water can pass through, and then you apply a force uh, it's going to push the clear, the clear water through the membrane towards the other side and keep all these solutes, the pieces that you wanted to keep out of the water, um, on the other side of the membrane. So kind of a neat process there. All right, but that is basically osmosis, the net movement of water from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration. Right, so the easiest way to figure it out is figure out how much water is on each side. Right Here we said it, this was going to be our 90% water because right, we said it was a 10% sugar. Over here, we know it's 20% uh, water, because we said it was 80% sugar. Right, figure out where the higher concentration of water is. Water moves from its area of high concentration to its area of low concentration. And right, so that is the uh, basics of osmosis.